3.1 is asking of us to calculate the gradient of AB. So we can say that um, the gradient of AB uh, will be equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus uh, x1, like we always say. Then which point are we taking as point 2 and which point are we taking as point 1? Uh, let's take uh, A as point 2. So this is going to be x2. Uh, y2 and then this is gonna be x1 y1 so if we go ahead with that idea we're gonna get uh, 3 minus uh, a half divided by 5 minus 0 so this is going to give us um, 5 divided by 2 uh, divided by 5 which is going to give us a half and then 3.2 says determine the equation of CE in the form y equals to mx plus c. So we know that BA is parallel to CE. So that tells us that our equation now can be y equals to a half x plus c. Now we just need to determine c, right? Of which we're gonna do that using point E. So if we substitute point E, we're gonna get uh, minus 4 for the y, which is equals to a half uh, x is 6 plus c. Uh, so if we make um, c the subject of the formula, we're gonna get c uh, equals to minus 4 uh, minus a half uh, multiplied by 6. Uh, a half of 6 is 3, right? So that is minus 4 minus 3, which is minus 7. So the equation of CE will be y equals to a half x minus 7, right? Yes. And then 3.3, 3 3.3.1 says calculate the coordinates of C. So we can see that uh, the length from D to E is the same as the length from D to C. So if we calculate the coordinates of D, then we can use uh, the midpoint formula or theorem so to say to calculate uh, the coordinates of C, right? So for D, it's easy to see that X equals to zero, right? So if X is, is equals to zero and it lies on C E, then it's easy to see that y will be equals to 1 equals to y will be equals to a half multiplied by 0 minus 7 uh, which is uh, minus 7 consequently right so we know that for d we have 0 and minus 7 so if we're interested on um, x of c we're gonna see uh, that is so if we're interested on x of c, we can see x of d equals to x of c plus x of e divided by 2. So x of d, what is that? That is 0, right? So x of c uh, is what you're interested in. What is x of c? Uh, x of e, I meant x of e is 6. So we're going to have 6 divided by 2. From here, you can see when you... Uh, cross multiply you're gonna get x c plus 6 equals to 0 so x of c equals to minus 6 uh, consequently if you want to do the same for um, y of d you're gonna get you're gonna see y of c plus y of e divided by 2 so y of d what is y of d y of d is minus 7 like we just deduced and then y of c is what we're interested in uh, y of e is minus 4 and then we divide by 2 when we cross multiply we get minus 14 equals to y of c minus 4 so we're gonna get y of c equals to 10 so the coordinates of c can be um minus 6 and minus 10 i meant and minus 10 i was surprised with why is c on the um third quadrant but it has a positive y value just a silly mistake there so fine uh, let's carry on let's do uh 
uh, 3.3.2 which says uh, area of quadrilateral a b c d so we have um let me just change the color with a b c d and the same we must calculate the quadrilateral right so um what i'm gonna do i'm gonna break the triangle into two right at the a b c d into two and then i'm gonna calculate the areas of the triangle in calculating the areas of the triangle uh, there's gonna be a bit of uh, creativity i'm gonna introduce look let me show you what i'm talking about so if i erase this and then i construct a straight line here so let me just construct the straight line this straight line so essentially i want to use uh, the area of a triangle is equal to one divided by two multiplied by side one multiplied by another side and then sine of the angle right uh, in between the sides so using this angle of inclination here of this line ce if i calculate that angle then that angle will be equals to this angle right so this entire angle here uh, will be 90 right because this is 90 because this is a straight line plus this angle here and after i've done that i can then see that um this whole entire angle is also equals to this angle here because uh, the two lines uh, b a and c e are parallel right so let me just remove some of this stuff and then we take it from the bottom so let's go so we can say that uh, tan theta equals to the gradient right so theta equals to tan arc of a half because we know that the gradient is a half there right so i think turn of a half is 45 but let me not embarrass myself and just put it in um ah exactly it's not so <laughs> it's actually 26,5651 so this angle here is 26,5651 so that will tell us that angle O D um why am I saying O D but writing OC O D C is equal to ninety degrees plus twenty six point five six five one which will be equal to one sixteen point five six five one we can say that angle O D C is equal to angle D b a because uh line a uh line b a is parallel to line uh, c e right so now we have determined uh, we have determined the size of these two angles so we know that uh, we have a triangle here right so if we want to calculate the area we determine the length of this line and this line and then we have the area of this triangle abd right and then for triangle bdc we determine uh, the length of uh, this line and this line and then we can get um the what the area so if we do that uh, let's calculate the area of b uh, the length of bd because bd is shared by both triangles right so for bd it's easy to see that uh, the length uh, will be close to seven units right because uh, that line is going down straight and um, the the difference between uh, o and d in the y in the y axis is uh, minus seven right so we've determined uh, the length of bd now we need the length of ba and cd so let's start with ba we can see that uh, the length of ba will be equals to uh, y2 minus y1 squared 
plus x2 minus x1 squared so again uh, let's take a as the second point uh, we're gonna get 5 minus actually we're gonna get 3 minus a half squared plus 5 minus 0 squared and let me put that in my calculator for the sake of time uh, this is giving me 5 divided by 2 multiplied by square root of 5 and now the length of uh, CD will be equal to uh, y2 minus y1 again squared plus x2 minus x1 squared so what is the value of y2 let's take d as the second point so that will be uh, minus 7 uh, minus uh, the y value of c uh, the y value of c is minus 10 so this will be uh, plus 10 squared uh, plus uh, the value of x for d is 0 right uh, minus the value of x for c which is minus 6 yeah so this is gonna be plus 6 squared so let me put that in my calculator real quick so I have essentially 3 squared uh, plus 6 squared uh, which is giving me 3 multiplied by the square root of 5 so now uh, the area of a b c d will be equal to half uh, let's start with this uh, triangle here half um, multiply by a uh, the length of a b which is 5 divided by 2 multiplied by square root of 5 multiply the length of uh, b d uh, which is 7 uh, sine of what's the angle again one one six point five six two so one one six point five six five one plus a half uh, the area the length of cd which is three multiplied by square root of five uh, multiplied by seven two multiplied by sine uh, one one six point five six five one and then this is giving me thirty eight point five basically uh, units uh, squared and then if I move ahead and uh, go to 3.4 and then 3.4.1 says write down the or if point K is the reflection of E in the y-axis write down the coordinates of K so if we talk about a reflection in the y-axis if you have a point E right with coordinates X and Y and you reflect about the y-axis the new coordinate will be e in place of x you'll have minus x and then you still have y so here our e is um six and minus four and then k is our reflection about the y-axis right so the coordinates of k will be minus six and minus four right so k is somewhere here right uh, let me clear my sketch up okay cool let's move ahead and then 3.4.2 we have a which is saying calculate the perimeter of k e c so perimeter we just add in the length of the three sides right so if we do that uh, so okay let's situate uh, k first so we know that c is minus six and minus 10 right and then k is minus 6 and minus 4 k is here basically this is where k is so if we join here then voila we have k is here. so the perimeter of k is here. we add in uh the four at uh, the three sides right so the length of ke what's the length of ke we can see that um k and e are on the same line right so the y we it doesn't have any effect we're only interested on the x x of k is um minus six like we're saying and then x of e is uh six so we're gonna have minus six so uh, the distance between k to e is minus 12 right uh, but then uh, we don't deal with uh, the direction in math so it's just gonna be 
12 units right that is uh, ke and then what's the length of um, kc now we have to use the distance formula again wow so okay if I <laughs> kc is equal to y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared this is torture this is torture the distance formula is very exhausting so okay let's take uh, k as the second point right so k is uh, minus six and minus four so here we're gonna have uh minus four uh, plus ten squared plus minus six plus six squared right so actually it seems like k is not here on the line but it's somewhere here because it's minus six right fine cool let's carry on so here we're gonna have uh, basically uh minus four plus ten that will be six squared and then that's 36 so this is equal to six units basically and then now we have uh we need the length of ce right so for the length of ce uh, we can just calculate the length of cd and multiply by two so if we do that we're gonna have two multiply by uh let's take d as the second point so y2 will be minus seven uh, minus y1 which is uh plus 10 uh, right um i think we have calculated the length of we have calculated the length of cd in in 3.3.2 so the length of cd is 3 multiplied by square root of 5 right so this is this will be 3 multiplied by square root of 5 right so we're gonna have um, 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by square root of 5 it is equal to 6 uh, multiplied by square root of 5 so the perimeter of kec uh, will thus be equals to 6 Ugh, what's happening here? 6 square root of 5 uh, plus 6 units plus 12 units. So how much is all that? That is um, that is giving me 31.4164 and now uh, we have 3.4.2 and then we have B. <coughs> which is saying size of kce so where is kce this is kce so we know that uh, this angle here is 90 right and then this is kce which we're interested in um i don't know how to deal with an angle that is here so i'm gonna stick with what i know right i know how to deal with an angle that is here i can just use sine or cos of something and then i determine the angle right so if i use sine for that angle i'm gonna determine this angle and then after i determine this angle i'm gonna determine c kce using the sum of angles in a triangle right so if i do that i'm gonna get um sine of angle e in our triangle kce right so sine is so okay opposite opposite is kc so what's kc kc is six units opposite uh, divided by hypotenuse hypotenuse is uh, ce which is six square root of five so e equals to sine arc of six divided by six square root of five let's just leave it like that for now so we're gonna know that uh, the size of kce is equals to 180 minus 90 minus sine six divided by six square root of five so if i put that in my calculator 180 minus 90 that is just 90 minus by this is sine arc forgot uh so we have sine arc oh where do how do i get sine arc here yeah. okay there we go divided by six square root of five uh so kce i'm getting 63.4349 uh, 